Now, Dr. Oliva from Spain, Barcelona, Spain, is welcome to uh, go with us more deep into the ceramic implants. Hello. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Henriette, for the kind invitation. I'm ha very happy to be here in Baden-Baden. So the topic of my lecture is ceramic implants, and particular the tooth replacement concept with Sarah Root. So in order to underst better understand the tooth replacement concept, I want to uh, start by doing a comparison uh, when in our practice, when we do, when we do um, titanium implants and when we do cera ceramic implants. So let's, let's see side, side by side. A typical patient where we will do a tooth replacement concept with a, a cera root implant and the typical patient where we would do the titanium implant. Here's a patient with a good bite, you can see healthy gums, good bone, a nice occlusion. So the patient just came for the tooth replacement. And on the other side, this patient doesn't come for a tooth replacement, the patient comes for a full mouth rehabilitation. And that's where we are going to use the titanium implants. So just to compare, uh, this is, you can see, good bone in the interdental spaces, and this is the endodontic failure that we must replace, a little bit of granulation tissue in the apex, and you can see a lot of bone missing in the right side, especially very thin crest. So the way we deal with these cases is in the tooth replacement concept, we place an atomic design implant, which we try to simulate as much as possible the anatomy of a, a central incisor. So you can see that the anatomy is, resembles very much the anatomy of the natural tooth, here is the implant, and at this level begins the crown. And you can see this is a two-year two post-op where we can see all the bone in the buccal plate. And this is a typical uh, full mouth uh, rehabilitation that we do with screw retain and titanium implants and fixed prosthesis. This is very especially important uh, for the maintenance of the patients. So here is the end result of the tooth replacement concept. So we still have a good pink tissue and a new crown. And in the right side, we were able to replace the full mouth and give a good function for the patient. So these are uh, very good quality treatments in our eyes, uh, both for tooth replacement and also to fixate a prosthesis into the mouth. So if you compare the beginning and in the end, in both cases, we were succeeding. So today we have available very good materials, uh, very good titanium implants and also very good ceramic implants. But the most important thing is to understand when to choose each material for the best indication. So. It's not just a matter of uh, replacing a tooth and a crown, it's also about the soft tissue around it. So today we know that there is a new soft tissue attachment on the surface of the implant, just like the natural tooth. And this soft tissue attachment we cannot uh, get with multiple parts and screws. So that's why we have designed several implants for different teeth in the mouth. This is uh, implant 12 for upper laterals and lower incisors. Number 21 and 11 we use for central incisors, uppers. This is for upper bicuspids, number 14. The 16 is for molars. And number 34 is for uh, lower bicuspids. So this is the example that I showed before of the Sora root 21. Is it an anatomic design implant? The intrabony part with the screw, then the transmucosal part, which gives the emergence profile of a, a natural tooth, and also an scallop design. This is very important, especially in, in the interdental spaces. So let me share with you this case that we have seen before. 
This is the preoperative panoramic and the uh, uh, 3D scan where we can see granulation tissue and a little bit of fenestration in the apex. So we are extracting the tooth and the way we do the surgery is that we do the, what we uh, call the closed mouth technique. This means that um, after, after every drill, we place the drill into the osteotomy and we must check the, the patient bite and we must check the implant inclination is in the perfect direction, both from the occlusal and from the facial. So the patient must be in a bite occlusion and it has a perfect inclination. So this is the implant that we are inserting and while we are doing the osteotomy, we place the implant in the sterile tooth with PRF. We are using this for um, many years now and with very good success. And we leave the implant like five minutes while we are doing the osteotomy. So just when we are finishing the osteotomy, the clot is ready. So we carry the implant into the patient's mouth already with the PRF clot. So once after the insertion, we leave the shoulder for the crown just one millimeter more apically in comparison to the adjacent natural tooth. And at this time, it's very important to fill with uh, bone graft and PRF all the spaces around it. So from the occlusal view, we must pack all the bones so we must make sure there is no collapse of the soft tissue. This is three months post-op. You can see the soft tissue volume very nicely healing. And from the facial view, this is day of surgery and this is three months. You can see that we have a growth, a vertical growth of tissue of about two to three millimeters. And if you compare the papillas in the day of surgery and three months, we have a growth of the papillas. This is happening in a regular basis, in a case like this. Look at the volume of the tissue in a very minimal intervention and very a traumatic way. This is the day we take impressions to build the crown. We put anesthesia and in the palatal side we uncover with an electric surge or laser. We want to find the shoulder for the crown and in the facial, we leave the soft tissue intact. And then we send the lab. They must make a temporary crown with under contour. This is important. So in the facial aspect, there is no pressure at all in the soft tissue. This is the way we deliver the temporary crown, the day of delivery. We are not pushing the, the tissue up, just horizontally. So again, this is the day of surgery, three months, and this is one month after the temporary. We have pushed the tissue laterally, and now it's ready to deliver the final crown. This is the final zirconia crown that it integrates very nice with the papillas and the soft tissue. And this is the final result. So if we compare the before and the after, we see that we even have a longer papilla after the treatment. This is one year after than before. And the reason is because during the healing phase, we let the tissue grow vertically. So this is a closer look. And the before, panoramic x-ray, and this is one year after. Again, we can see the emergence profile of the tooth, the implant, the emergence profile, and here it's where the implant finish and begins the crown. So all this space between the bone and the shoulder for the crown is the space for the biologic width that will be attached on the surface of the implant. So I think I lost connection here. OK.
Okay. So again, this is the 3D image where we can see lots of bone in the facial aspect. This is the before. This is one year post-op. And if we see the papilla, the distal papilla, beautiful papilla, it integrates uh, very much from the right side, from the led left side. Good smile. And again, if we compare the beginning and the after, we have a much higher papilla. But after the years, we understand that um, the most important part is not just to provide a nice crown and also nice pink papilla. The most important part is that with this kind of treatment, with a tooth replacement concept, we are able not just to replace the crown, but also the soft tissue attachment on the surface. And today we know this because uh, we have done histological studies together with the University of Minnesota, and we have seen a good osseointegration of the uh, zirconia. But what's more important is that the surface of the implant, it helps to have an, a very nice connective tissue attachment, very thick, and also the epithelium attachment on the surface of the implant. And this is the good, very good news that today we can recreate the periodontal apparatus on the tooth. We can recreate this on an implant. So for this reason, it's not just about uh, placing an implant on a crown. It's more than that. It's about replacing the periodontal apparatus in the surface of the tooth. And we cannot do this with multiple parts implant. And just to finish, I will go with this case. This is a more complex case because it is, it's a four unit uh, central incisor. We must extract the four units. This patient had an accident when he was young, and at that time he received two endodontic treatments in tooth number 12 and 11. And after the years, he became to start to have multiple infections. You can see some fistulas here. So when we do a closer examination, so I don't know what's going on here. OK, so when we do a closer examination, uh, we see in the panoramic X-ray there is a granulation tissue. And we can see there is external resorption of all the teeth, the endodontic and the non-endodontic. And you can see a big. Uh, granulation tissue around tooth number 21 and 22. You can see the big fenestration in tooth number 21, involving also tooth number 22. This is the loss of bone in the uh, cortical bone on the facial aspect. Again, and this is the day of surgery. So we do the uh, tooth extractions and the most important part is that we have bone in the interdental spaces. So it's very important when we do the osteotomy to preserve uh, this bone. So again, we use the closed mouth technique in order to check the perfect inclination for the implants from the facial and as well from the occlusal view. And this is a small video that uh, shows you how to we manage the PRF together with the implants. We place the implants in the uh, sterile tubes, and we place the PRF. This is very easy. Normally, we do this while we are doing the surgery. We have an assistant that is doing this procedure. And after doing this, in the uh, cases that we want to add bone graft, we also will add bone graft together in the same tooth. We use chinograft. So we add some particles of bone graft here, you can see. OK. So this is five minutes, five to 10 minutes after doing this. We can extract the implants from the tube, and they look like this. This is the implant carrier, this is the implant, and this is the PRF together with the bone graft. We call this the crocanti technique, and 
It's very simple how to uh, place this in the patient's mouth. Sorry. Okay. We go ahead and very slowly we start twisting in the implant and you will see that all the material, the PRF and the bone graft, will be inserted into the patient's mouth. I will go faster, so... The implant is inserted. And this slide shows us how we finish the case, the surgery. We put some sutures in order to stabilize the soft tissue, and we fill all the spaces with bone graft. This is the facial aspect in a very minimal, a traumatic way. And this is the temporary S6 appliance with composite that we use. This temporary, it's very important that doesn't touch the soft tissue. And I don't know what's going on here. And by, doing on, by doing so, we can see the soft tissue growth on the surface of the implant. This is three months post-op. Three months post-op. Now the implants are ready for a temporary in this case, we do a, a four-unit, temporary. It's very important that when we do the temporary, there is a lot of space in the interdental for the papilla, so it doesn't make any pressure at all at the papilla level. So this is the day we deliver the temporary. You can see that it's not doing any pressure at all in the interdental spaces. And this is 10 months after the placement of the, no, after the surgery, 10, 10 months. So now we check with a panoramic, with a 3D image, where the bone is. And it's good news because here, the worst case scenario, we have uh, regenerated the bone. We ha have a good cortical. See, this is the before, the big defect. And in a very uh, traumatic way, we were able to solve this case. From the uh, coronal view, we can see that all the bone that is growing in, on the facial aspect of the implants. And this is the day before the delivery of the final crowns. You can see all the soft tissue, very nice healing around the implants, very much stability of the soft tissue over time. This is now one year when we cement these crowns. This is the day of the cementation. Sorry. Day of cementation. You can see where's the bone. This is one year after surgery. This is the feet of the crown and the bone. So the bone is very stable, it's not going away. And this is the reason why we have these intact papillas. So considering the initial situation, you can see the, where the papillas were in the initial situation and the end result. So we are very happy to be able to maintain not just the, the volume, but also the papilla height. So with this slide, I just uh, thank you for your kind attention.